Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity, work vlogs, and this is one of the videos I've been wanting to make for a long time, but I've been pushing it off just because I've been doing some more research. But here it is, it is the top five best beginner certifications for cybersecurity. Okay, just to kick it off with a super generic cybersecurity intro level certification, it is the CompTIA Security Plus. Now, I might be slightly biased, but I actually took this certification in November of 2020, and I was about a year into my beginner level role as a cybersecurity analyst. My background is in software development, so cybersecurity was new to me, and this certification actually really, really helped me get the lingo and the basics of everything high level in cybersecurity that you could hope to know, especially in a beginner level role. So I believe there were seven big sections in the CompTIA Security Plus. I took the 501 version, but I know there's a 601 version with a mobile security section. And I can also link below the video that I made about how I passed my Security Plus so you can review any resources, which includes all the resources that I used to study as well as my time frame and how I studied. So I can definitely link that below if you guys are interested. But CompTIA Security Plus basically went over everything from firewalls to Faraday cages to encryption, hashing, access management, incident response, digital forensics, secure coding, protocols, port numbers, different tools that are used, Linux commands, basically everything that you could think of as a high level security person. And this was really helpful because when I first started, I was sitting in on calls about firewalls and different servers and I had no idea what DNS even was. And Security Plus actually really helped with that because now at least I know high level what these things are and how they fit into the bigger picture of the company's network or whatever scenario or situation that we're working through. So that's why I feel like it is one of those beginner certifications that you can get with the most practical information to learn because these are the things that you're gonna hear in everyday meetings um, with your teammates, especially if you're in a cybersecurity focused role. But again, this is a beginner cert. For example, you could be an incident response or in an entry level pen testing team like I am and also taking this exam so it is so broad and generic and that's why I feel like it's just one of those really good certs to get under your belt because even if you don't use it in your current role or like this information never comes up it is also something that's well known which can also make you stand out of course any certification can make you stand out but I feel like CompTIA Security Plus will be the one that most people are familiar with when you are looking for jobs or going into an interview and because of the fact that it's so well known people already know that oh this person has a certification so they know about Faraday cages or at least they know high level the important port numbers or encryption and hashing algorithms so that is one of the big pluses of getting a certification especially a beginner level one that is well known but of course that is not to hate on all the other certifications in this video it just so happens that security plus is just very broad and it's one of the very popular beginner certs that many people in cybersecurity seek to get another thing is that the security plus has no prerequisites so you can get it out of college you can get it as a college student you can get it whenever you want. I believe there's an age limit and you need like parental approval to take the exam, but that's it. Like there's nothing preventing you from taking it as a normal person who might have never taken any cybersecurity roles or classes before. And that's another big plus because you don't need to come from a cybersecurity background to take this exam. Okay, so the next one I noticed is very commonly compared to Security Plus, but it is the System Security Certified Practitioner Certification. But this is a really good certification for anyone who is trying to get into any hands-on IT experiences or roles. So of course, this is a bit more niche because it focuses on operational IT processes. So if you're looking for roles that are going to secure business assets or IT assets, this certification will basically prove that you have those skills to implement, manage, or administer IT infrastructure. So if you're thinking about network stuff, server stuff, all of those more hands-on technical things, the SSCP will be a really helpful certification for those roles. One important thing to note though is that the SSCP does require a one-year prerequisite of work experience and they have seven domains. You need to have paid experience for at least one year in at least one or more of the seven security domains that they test on. So basically compared to the Security Plus where you don't need any experience at all, that is a big reason why the Security Plus is more popular. But again, if you're trying to go into that IT infrastructure, network administrator, IT administrator type roles, then this certification is a lot more niche and it would be better for you to take this certification instead if this is the niche area that you're trying to go into. Whereas the CompTIA Security Plus is a lot more broad and kind of for any cybersecurity beginner role. Now I can link the ISC2 organization information below just so you can read more about the requirements as well as the CompTIA Security Plus requirements just so you have an idea of what you'll need. But they have very specific guidelines laid out for the exact amount of hours you should have worked 
and you can also include internship experience but on the plus side there is one more thing where they basically give you the one year prerequisite if you went to a college that is certified based on their requirements as an approved cybersecurity degree and they have a list of different majors on your website so you can definitely check that out and their list of approved degree programs is periodically updated so definitely keep an eye out on their website and you can probably also email them and learn more to see if if you were in a very niche program in your school but again because of these requirements this isn't as popular as the security plus but it's a very good way to get a niche certification if this is the field that you know you want to go into okay so the next certification is the CompTIA network plus I know you're probably tired of hearing about CompTIA but CompTIA is a very well-known organization for these beginner certifications and the network plus is definitely a popular one as well as a plus I was kind of debating which one I should add on here, but I decided to go with the Network Plus. And this is a beginner certification that basically focuses on, you guessed it, networks. So with the certification, you'll be able to configure, manage, and basically work with and implement various networks, as well as working with all of the network devices that are on a company's perimeter or their network. And your job is basically to work with different routers and switches and manage all the network traffic, as well as building resilient networks. For example, if one router or if one switch or load balancer goes down, how is that going to be handled and does that network go somewhere else? Is it going to overwhelm the rest of the switches and devices on the network? Are there backups or contingency plans that you have in place to make sure that the systems do not fail and whole network infrastructures go down? And a lot of those things are going to go into the Network Plus. And this is also pretty similar to the SSCP that we talked about previously, but the Network Plus specifically focuses on network infrastructure and it helps prep you to support across various different networks regardless of the platform or the specific company that you're working with. Another reason why I decided to choose the Network Plus over the A Plus is because there are many IT professionals who start off with the A Plus and then get the Network Plus. And the A plus is kind of for when you don't have that background knowledge, but I feel like if you're gonna get a certification, you might as well get the one that is going to encompass everything and is well recognized in the industry. The main things that are gonna be tested are network infrastructure, concepts, security and operations, as well as relevant tools. All right, I switched up the angle a little bit, but, but another thing that might help with your decision between choosing between the SSCP as well as the network plus, as well as a certification called the CCNA, which I did not include in this list, but but is also very often compared to the Network Plus is that the Network Plus does not require any prerequisites for taking the exam, but they recommend the A Plus and nine to 12 months of previous relevant networking experience. So you technically don't need these things like you necessarily would with the SSCP, but it is a nice to have just because you might have that background knowledge that could help you on the exam. But for the most part, it's kind of like the Security Plus where they recommend some experience, but there are no requirements specifically to actually take the exam. Okay, so the fourth certification that I wanted to discuss is the GIAC Information Security Fundamental Certification. This one I found was similar to the CompTIA Security Plus, just in the terms of the general information that's presented, but they have a few different concepts that they go over, as well as the experience level is for anyone who is trying to switch into a cybersecurity role or switching careers, non-IT security managers, systems administrators, and IT officers, or anyone who might write or administer security policies at a enterprise level. So these concepts are more for those who might be working on the more businessy side of cybersecurity, so not necessarily doing like pen testing, working with routers or networks, but you're more so on the side that focuses on governance, administration, writing security policies, and different things like that. So for this certification, you're someone who might be less technical or you don't want to be as technical in cybersecurity, then this certification is definitely for you. It focuses on the basics of computer networks, basic network terminology, and overall cybersecurity terminology, incident response and security policies, as well as different password concepts and an introduction to cryptography. Also, if you are a tech or cybersecurity manager and you manage a team of cybersecurity analysts or security developers, this might be a good role for you just so you can understand the basic terminology and the topics that are gone over without having to go as nitty gritty as the Security Plus does because you're probably not gonna need to know all the port numbers and protocols and different hashing algorithms, but the basic network terminology, um, security policies and password concepts, I think those will still be important for you, especially if you're looking for a more general and high level certification that will kind of 
have ground your knowledge. Okay, so knowing all this information, the GISF is still an entry level certification no matter what field you are in, no matter what level you are in your career. So there are no prerequisites for experience levels or anything to take the exam, but know that there is a written portion of the exam, which is different from a lot of beginner level certifications for cybersecurity. So that could take some extra prep work and studying to kind of know what to expect on that exam, but it's definitely an important thing to note. Okay, so this next certification is the Pentest Plus. And while I might be a little bit biased, I believe that pen testing is one of the coolest roles that you can get in cybersecurity. And this includes ethical hacking. Pen testing kind of leads to a bunch of different things like ethical hacking and red teaming or blue teaming. So if those are the routes that you want to go into and you're still a beginner, I definitely think you should look into the pen test plus. Starting off again, it is a CompTIA exam or certification. So there are no required prerequisites, which I think is the best part. Like you don't have to prove yourself in years of experience because I do believe that years of experience experience does not equate to being able to do a job super well. I mean, experience definitely is very important, but I also feel like after a certain amount of time, um, the years of experience don't matter as much down the line. So the recommended experience for the Pentest Plus is having already taken the Network Plus, Security Plus, or some kind of equivalent hands-on experience with pen testing. And on their website, they actually asked for three to four years of relevant experience, which I thought was a little intense. I don't believe that you'll need three to four years of experience just to take the Pentest Plus because of course there is a certified ethical hacking certification which is a lot more advanced and meant for ethical hackers which is kind of like that next level mid-level career uh, certification that you would want to get. That's why I feel like three to four years is a bit much for the Pentest Plus. On the website it does say that this exam is intended to follow on the CompTIA Security Plus or any hands-on relevant experience that could match that. So similar to the Security Plus, there are performance-based and multiple choice questions. That basically means that there are questions that are going to be open-ended where you're kind of going to be working with different diagrams or potentially they're going to show you some kind of scenario and you're going to have to figure it out and it's not only going to be multiple choice so keep that in mind because sometimes there are some tricky questions and even if it's only like four or five in the beginning it can really take up all of your time because since those diagram questions are at the front you can actually spend 30 40 minutes on those questions and only have half an hour to finish the rest of the 60 70 80 questions that are on the exam that are multiple choice so just keep that in mind it's really important um, to know your time constraints and that's why i feel like these performance-based questions are really tricky sometimes and there's a certain amount of time where you have to allot to them and after that you have to say okay I need to get to these multiple choice questions or I'm literally not going to finish the exam but kind of like I said earlier the pen test plus is great for beginners who are trying to get into pen testing vulnerability testing security analysts or network security operational roles and the list of topics include planning and scoping for penetration tests different ways of gathering information and identifying vulnerabilities understanding attacks and exploits and how they are used to attack a system different penetration testing tools which i think is probably one of the most important topics especially when you're going into an interview for pen testing you're going to want to have an idea of how to use those tools and at least at a high level what they do and the last thing that they cover is reporting at the end of the day pen testing is all about being able to break into a system and then relay this information back to someone else. Like you're not just exploiting a system for fun. You are going to write a report and try to help this application team or this company fix their security flaws and vulnerabilities, which is why reports are really important. And again, a lot of what I do in my role, half the time is documentation about the vulnerabilities I found, the applications I assess and everything in between. So all in all, there's a lot of reporting and documentation that needs to be done. And I do believe that is a skill that is learned. You don't just start off writing reports with flying colors because there's going to be peer reviews. There's going to be people looking over your work and it's seeing like where the holes are and where you might've missed something or maybe it wasn't as clear on certain findings. So definitely keep that in mind. Even though it might seem like not a big thing, reports are really important because that is the information that is going to be captured and passed along from your actual security assessment. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys liked it and definitely let me know in the comments any recommendations that you might have for cybersecurity certification that either you've taken or you know about that, that might be good for beginners just to share with the community. This is by no means a comprehensive list of anything. This is just things that I found that I believed were good certifications for someone who is beginner and maybe doesn't have any experience in cybersecurity yet and they're just trying to break into the field. 
whether you're going into pen testing, systems, admin stuff, IT infrastructure, or just a general cybersecurity analyst role, all these certifications can be helpful for one of those roles that you're interested in in cybersecurity. Again, there's not enough of us out there, so I really believe that cybersecurity is a really good role to get into, especially if you're a beginner or trying to make a career change to kind of get your foot in the door and stand out during interviews or job applications. And if you're interested, I have a lot of videos on my channel that go over beginner cybersecurity concepts, different roles, skills that are unique to cybersecurity that would be helpful. And let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you want to see or any specific topics that you want me to cover i do have a few in my backlog from you guys already but i'm always open to hearing what you guys want to see and suggestions so that's it for this video i hope you guys liked it if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesday at 2 p.m and sundays at 12 p.m and i get back to every comment so definitely don't be afraid to drop a comment down there so that's it and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye